Once again, if you're just joining us, please silence your cell phones and all the other stuff I usually say. Jake, give us an overview, please. Yeah, great uh, night tonight. Uh, unbelievable crowd. I think two things really stand out. Uh, the team, our team, was locked in from the first pitch. Uh, we talked a lot about just focusing on execution, and uh, they did that really, really well. And this time of year, you win these games against these elite teams when um, great players play great. And that was certainly the case with Paul from the mound tonight, Braden, Gavin from the batter's box. I uh, thought it was a really solid game. thought we played clean baseball, and our our guys were guys, and that's what it takes to win games here. Okay, open it up now for questions for the student athletes. Uh, raise your hand, and we'll get a mic to you. And I th saw Leah first. Paul, uh, Tony Vitello just said that he felt like you pitched backwards against Tennessee versus the last time you saw uh, he saw you. So what was kind of your game plan? What pitches were working? Yeah, I mean, at different points today, I had all four pitches working. Um, and, I mean, you have to look at, at obviously, their lineup, but uh, also, you know, what's working for me. And um, went out there and, and made pitches, um, you know, kind of through what they weren't expecting at times and uh, worked pretty well. Okay, Sam. Sam McEwen from the World Herald. Paul, can you talk just a little bit about the night? That setting, 25,000 fans, uh, throwing the way that you did that experience, what it what it was like. Yeah, it was awesome. And I think I'm going to need a little bit of time to kind of internalize that and take it all in. Because um, I don't think I was able to do that as much as uh, probably some other people were tonight. Um, but it was an awesome experience to go out there um, and, you know, compete in front of that many people. Um, Alex Box Stadium is a pretty cool place. But, I mean, this is a different animal. It was, it was really cool. Okay, who you got? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Glenn Wesco, 247. Uh, Gavin and Braden, just the, the hitters tonight, you guys seem to really just kind of pace yourselves, and um, it, it just it just really looked like you guys just did a, a, good, a good job of moving the offense when you needed to. Just how would you assess what, 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 what you guys were able to do out there tonight? Gavin, you start, please. Oh. Uh, absolutely no. We uh, we had a plan, and I, I think we really stuck to it. Um, we had a lot of balls hard at people in the beginning, um, so it, it kind of showed you how we, we came out. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we had a plan, and I think we did a really good job of, of doing that as well as adjusting the pitchers that came into the game. Uh, so we were just really locked in as a team. Brayden, yeah, um, I agree with him. Um, you know, we were just focused on the plan that we had before the game and, you know, slowing ourselves down, not getting too uh, anxious because, you know, it's an unbelievable environment. There's 20-something thousand people there. So um, just, you know, taking our breaths and, and focusing on our job. Okay, next question. Who you got? Yeah, right here. <clears throat> Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Braden in uh, Round Rock, you reflected a lot about your improvement from last year to this year and the huge game, obviously, this much, much bigger stage. But this moment, um, this game for you, this performance tonight and all the hard work, is it, you know, worth it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this is what you play for, to come and play on this stage. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of my team, very proud of Paul, and very proud of Gavin. Um, you know, we all – work really, really hard, and it's for these moments. So, um, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Okay, back over here. Yeah. Uh, Miguel Paredes Reyes, LSU Tiger TV. Paul, you hit your 200th strikeout of the season today, just too shy of the SEC record. Did you have that in mind at all in your outing tonight? Not really. Um, found out about that after the game, uh, which is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it comes down to executing and uh, – I think I did a, a good job of that today, um, especially especially early on. Um, and so, I, you know, it's really cool to 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 do that. But um, yeah, just a lot more happy with the execution. I think. Okay. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV. If we can get Gavin and Braden on this one, just the, um, your feelings now that you kind of broke the seal on this thing and maybe took some of the mystique away from the College World Series, having success early. <coughs> how much did that help you, Gavin and, and Braden? Kevin, uh, no, it was awesome. You know, I've been uh, I've been waiting a long couple of days uh, since we've been in the hotel. I know everybody else has, 
Uh, but it, it was awesome just to see the environment and take it all in in that first pitch of the game. Um, it's everything you could expect and more. I mean, Coach told us whenever we um, won the Super Regional that it's going to be everything you expect times four. Uh, and he was right about it. And I'd say times 10. Um, but I'm, it was awesome just to enjoy that first game and we're ready for the next one. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like I said earlier, um, you know, we were just focused on slowing ourselves down because it's such a big environment and such a big stage. But um, it was unbelievable. It was everything I thought it would be. And um, yeah, it was just, it was awesome. OK, let's go to Leah here. <coughs> Leah Van, Baton Rouge advocate. Braden, you had three extra base hits tonight. What were you seeing from the plate? Yeah, I was just trying to get the ball. I was trying to get the ball up. Um, you know, stay at the bottom of the zone. That was something that uh, I needed to improve from from last weekend. And um, you know, that was the focus in BP and in all the training going into the uh, you know this week. So um, you know, just sticking to my plan. Um, you know, following what our coaches tell us. And uh, yeah, it's it worked out positive for me. Okay, Jake. Jake McKeever, College Baseball Central. Gavin, can you kind of talk us through that at bat with the home run, what you're looking for and, and what you saw? Uh, just obviously, like Braden said, just trying to get something up. Um, our, our game plan was to get balls up with the guy. I mean, he had a lot of sink, a lot of run. Um, so the only way to be successful was to see him over the plate. And fortunately, I was able to spit on two balls and then see one ball up. Uh, so I, I was lucky enough to put a good swing on a good ball and uh, put the Tigers out in front right there. Back over here. Let's see. Uh, Grant Sasher in the Valley Shook. Um, for a lot of you guys, this is your first time playing in front of 20,000 fans in Omaha. How do you guys handle the nerves? This is a question for all you guys. Paul, you start. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is something that we've looked forward to all year. I mean, this is why I came to LSU. Um, but honestly, playing in front of as many fans as we have at, at Alex Box um, and kind of mentally preparing uh, over the last 10 months or, or whatever it's been, um, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, it just comes down to execution. And uh, coach says the game doesn't change, people change. And as long as we make it um, to where we don't change, then that allows us to have success here. Braden? Yeah, um, you know, we like to embrace it, no matter how many fans are in the stands. Uh, at Alex Box, you know, we average probably nine to 10,000 a game. It's, you know, the only place in the country that's like that. So. You know, I wouldn't say we're used to playing in front of 20,000 people, but, you know, we play in front of crowds a lot. So, um, yeah, you know, it's just it's super cool. And if you just look around and, you know, have a full circle moment, it's just it's like, how can you not have the most fun? You know, it's just go out there, have fun and, and embrace the um, opportunity that we're given. Absolutely. No, yeah. to go along with that, um, I would say we, we play 56 games in the regular season and we play 56 playoff games in our mind. Uh, so every every game that we play is a playoff game. No matter what we do, no matter how we prepare, we're preparing to win a playoff game. And that's something that I think that has made a, us very successful in those moments and what's going to continue to help us move forward. Okay, this will be the last question coming up. Uh, Jocelyn? Jocelyn Stamp, Sports Illustrated Kids. Paul, what advice would you give to kids facing a pitcher like you? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, be ready for the fastball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say. That's pretty much it. That's all you can do. You throw fastballs, yeah. <laughs> Okay, men, thank you. Uh, you're excused, and then we'll start here in a second. Thank you. C questions for <laughs> Coach Johnson. That's a good answer, Paul. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay. First question, we'll start here with Sam. Hey, Coach, you've been around here long enough to know that there's been really great pitchers who have come here and not done well. What can you say about Paul's performance tonight with all the pressure and all the attention on him the way it was? Yeah, I'm really proud of him, and, and I certainly don't take these outings for granted, but that's about the 16th one that we've seen like that, and um, remarkable. Um, I'm really proud of him for tonight because uh, – 
he had a lot on his plate here, you know, and all great things, you know, with the, the Dick Houser Award. But that was uh, um, took a lot of time and effort, and um, what a great honor. And, I mean, he just showed tonight why he was probably the clear-cut winner for that award. Um, so we tried to get him some rest and kind of insulate him as best we could so he could um, be on track with his preparation because he does that better than anybody else. I mean, as good as the performance is, the preparation is even better. And I think what gets lost with him sometimes because his stuff is so amazing, uh, the pitch execution is tremendous. And when you put that kind of stuff with that kind of execution, you have Paul Skeens. <clears throat> Go Go to Leah here, and then we'll go to Leah Van Baton Rouge Advocate. Um, Jay, I know Paul's had great outings the whole season, but what do you think has been what was the difference between the last time he faced this lineup to this time? Yeah, we just we kind of did a, a hybrid thing of you know look back at at those games, and then we look back at where they were recently, and uh, some of those guys have improved, and um, we felt like we needed to attack them a little bit different way. And then looking at it also, um, you know, their plan early in the game, we were able to kind of figure out what they were trying to do with him. And then uh, West did a nice job of, of calling pitches, and then big man took care of the rest as far as execution. Okay, back here. Michael? Yeah, Jay, that was going to be my question. Just the selection. You were talking about the execution, but the selection to keep him off balance and the change working early. Uh, do you feel like that really was this tone setter? Yeah, for sure. I mean, they were on fastballs in the first inning. They had a hit. Um, Inslee had a hit. And then um, Dickey lined out. And so um, Ahuna swung early. And so you could tell they were trying to jump him. And sometimes that's all you can do. And when it's getting on you that fast, you have to make an early decision. And when you have to make an early decision and he starts throwing his change up like that, there's not a lot you can do. And, um, yeah, the execution of all three tonight was pretty elite. Right here, Doc. Uh, Coach, the job Josh Pearson did in left field tonight made a few nice catches for you. Yeah, spectacular. Um, you know, I, the, tonight was very reminiscent of we started this season at Texas A&M um, league play. We started league play at Texas A&M. It was a bigger field. The wind was blowing in. Uh, we played him because I just think he gives us professional at-bats. He's a pretty good defensive outfielder, and that paid off. And um you know he's obviously earned his spot in there with how he's performed throughout the postseason but left field here is a really tough place to play at the six o'clock game there's son that sits right you know right over there and we actually had to warn him about it um we're here in 21 we hit a double over the left fielder's head and and then we misplayed a ball in left field in the first inning so um it's really tough but he did a nice job and and mark wanaka I've said this before, is the best positioner of outfielders in the planet, and he did. He earned his money tonight with that. They hit a couple right at Dylan and um, right at Josh. Okay, go cool, right, right there, Tanner. Jay, Zach Rujanda, and the Valley Shook. Um, we've talked a lot about Paul Skeens tonight, but what about the job Riley Cooper did coming in and closing this thing out, especially after he got a little hairy in the eighth? Yeah, uh, poise, competitiveness, winner and uh, all of the above, and um, he's been at his best, you know, here basically since the SEC tournament. Um, that's like four or five really good outings in a row, and the tempo was amazing. I mean, it was like get the ball back on the rubber, strike one. <laughs> I mean, it was really impressive, and, uh, you know, like I said, sometimes it's not about spin rates. It's not about velocity. It's about winning pitching, and, and Riley's doing a lot of winning pitching right now. Did he seem comfortable, especially having a previous experience? I think so. Yeah, I think I think so, and I've felt that way the whole NCAA tournament, and, and certainly tonight. Let's go right here first, uh, Coach. So far, all the other three games so far this weekend have been won in the last two innings. Um, what words did you have to Riley Cooper when he went into close? Yeah, we actually talked about that. It's three one-run games um, in, in the previous three, and um, you know, it's you never know when those big pitches are going to come that are going to tip the game, and so. A lot of boring, stay in the moment, present moment, focus, you know, type stuff and try to win as many innings as we could. And all those runs, you know, taking it from two to nothing to four to nothing and then from four to zero to five to zero on Trey Sack Fly and then Brayden's home run, that proved to be a really big deal. But for him, it was just about execution. He came in after the home run so, and there was two outs in the inning. So it was really just about getting that first guy 
uh, out, and we didn't. Again, infield single. Nice try on that play by Jordan right there uh, with the guy running down the line. But then to strike out Christian Moore, who has been a, had a phenomenal season, um, one of the best players in the SEC, hands down for me. But he made, he made it really tough on him with how he executed. So, And then he was pumped up after that one, and then I just kind of looked at Wes and I was like, hey, <laughs> Get him, get him settled back down because we got to go out and, and get three more outs. And so, um, but y- you know what you're going to get with him, and that's the best thing I'll say about him is you, you know what you're going to get with Riley. So we had one back here, I think. Yeah. Hey, coach. Um, I, I was just sort of curious with Braden, how much do you think that offseason surgery has helped him just see the ball and just hit it a lot more consistently this year? Yeah, he's done a great job, and in every phase, um, you know, we. we Last year's evaluation, there was areas we needed marked improvement, and we've talked about those things, athleticism, defense, vision, plate discipline, at bats between homers, and he's literally done all of that. And, um, you know, you win games this time of year when guys like him, you know, step up and play their best, and, you know, it's a game-winning homer against uh, Oregon State, you know, and that, that 1-0 game of the, the regional was obviously big, um, and three great at bats tonight, and, uh, just when I look up, because we're looking at him in the face from the third base dugout, just the self control and the locked in, and he, he's, he was a professional hitter tonight. Okay, this will be our last question here, Michael. Yeah, Jay, if you would um, kind of talk about the offense. Obviously, you guys have seen a lot of top tier pitchers, but yes. you always seem to find a way to figure them out. Gavin getting it going and Braden, as you just alluded to. But what is it about those guys? Is it just their ability to stay in the moment and kind of work through the problem? Yeah, um, good pitching beats good hitting. I mean, that's baseball has always been that way. Um, we have a great offense. Um, I think uh, one to nine is you have a lot of things working for you right now. There's there's some speed, there's some power, obviously, solid hitting skills throughout, but you got a ton of college at bats in there, and um, they've been useful. And what I mean by that is. That, they all weren't exactly what they are now, but they hold themselves to a high standard of of what the team needs out of them. And then they just don't give in, you know, the way a lot of typical college hitters do. And then when you do that, you get to some of the talent in, in terms of on-base percentage and slugging, runs, uh, all of those types of things. I thought we played very mature baseball tonight. I mean, we got the one error, but that was a tough play. Jordan did everything right on that play to come get it. And he's, the only hop he could have caught was the short hop and still made the play. But I thought we played gr- great, clean baseball on both sides, took really good at bats, and then um, – we had some, like I said, we had some of our guys were guys tonight. Thank you, Jay. And we'll see you Monday night. Yes, sir. Uh, Wake will be the home team. Yes, sir. Yeah.